Hi everyone, I'm Jane and today we are going to paint a summer night at the lake. For this painting we're going to experiment with some texture by using some gloss gel. If you don't have gloss gel or you just prefer to do it without the texture, it's completely optional. You don't have to use it. If you'd like to know where you can get some gloss gel for a really good price, check out the video description below for a link to my website where I have affiliate links to dickblick.com and I've got one especially for gloss gel. Also check out the video description below for a full list of materials and let's get started. So to get started, we're gonna use a medium that we haven't ever used before and that is gloss gel. Now I'm using Liquitex, but there are gloss gels in many other brands. If you can't find gloss gel, but you find matte gel, it's the same thing. The only difference is that this will dry with a shiny finish and matte gel will dry with a matte finish. And we're gonna use a palette knife to apply this. Any type of palette knife you have, it doesn't matter the size or the shape, just whatever you're comfortable with. I'm using this one that has a longer edge just so that I can cover more of the canvas quickly. Now this gel, when you open the jar, it is white, but once it dries, it will be clear. So it doesn't really matter if it's clear or white at this point because we're gonna paint over all of it. We're just using it for some texture. So as you can see in the jar, it doesn't really flow. It's a little bit firmer, but it's not a heavy gel. They do make heavy gels that will give you quite a bit of texture you can get. You can really build up the texture and get some heavy peaks. This one is gonna dry just a little bit smoother, and that's what I wanted for this painting. Now this part is completely optional. If you don't have the gel, you can't find it, or you just don't wanna use it, you don't have to. So I'm gonna take my palette knife, and I'm just gonna go right into the jar of gel and just pick some up. And I'm gonna start spreading it in all different directions. Hopefully you can see the texture there. I know it's kind of hard to see white on white, but I'm not making it completely smooth. I don't want big chunks and blobs, but I'm just applying it enough to get a little bit of texture. You don't have to worry about covering all of the canvas. If you leave some of the canvas texture showing, I think that that's okay. And notice I'm going in all kinds of directions. So this is really gonna help make it feel like there's some texture and clouds and just make the painting a little bit more interesting. Because as we paint over it later, some of these little grooves are gonna grab more of the paint or the paint might skip it and one of the other colors might show through there. You can also mix your paint with this medium and we're gonna do that in a future video. I'm pretty new to this medium so I haven't tried that just yet. So that's something I wanna experiment with before I show you how to do that. Now down here is where I'm gonna put my water. So you can decide if you want the same kind of texture where your water is or not. You can change the way you're applying the gel and do more of a horizontal look like this if you want. I'm not really gonna worry about it because I'm just interested to see what happens. So I haven't, I've used this gel before for similar type things, but when I was practicing this painting for you guys, I actually was painting over an old palette knife painting and I could see the, the texture through the sky and I really liked that. So I decided to use some of this medium and get some of that texture in there too. If you want, you can get really creative if you wanna plan it out a little bit more and like sketch on where your mountains are gonna go, where your trees are gonna go, your hills, all of that, and apply the gel in those directions. And then as you paint, you can paint over top of those elements to really give everything its own texture. I'm not really gonna do that because I just want kind of a general idea of some texture. So here I turned off a couple of my lights so that you can get a little bit of a better idea of how I applied that texture. And you can see it's not terribly thick, 
Some parts of the canvas are still showing a little bit. It's just a very subtle texture. And I applied it over the entire canvas, top to bottom. All right, now we're gonna let this dry completely before we come back and paint on it. I'm not exactly sure how long it's gonna take for this to dry, but I will time it and I'll let you know when we come back. Okay, so the texture is dry and as you can see, it reduced just a little bit. It's a little bit flatter than when I added it. So if you want a good amount of texture, apply it a little bit heavier than I did the first time. And if you don't apply it heavy enough, and you decide you want more afterwards, then you can apply another layer and let it dry. But just know that the heavier portions of it will take about an hour or more, depending on how heavy it is, to dry. The very thin areas only took maybe 10, 15 minutes. So I'm gonna use my 3 quarter inch filbert brush, and this brush is very soft, and I know typically I tell you that I don't like these very soft brushes to cover backgrounds but I'm not gonna be just swiping back and forth and painting in all of this background in a solid color. I'm gonna be adding my background in little layers with, you know, starting with one color, building to the next, and I'm gonna be doing small brush strokes. So the fact that this gloss gel is very slick is gonna help the paint travel a little bit better. And I'm doing small brush strokes to get some additional texture in the color. So this brush will work just fine for that. So I'm just gonna wet it really well in the jar, wipe off a bit, and I'm gonna start with the brightest part of my sunset, so the yellow white. So just decide where you want your sun to be. And I think I'm gonna put mine right about in this area. So I'm gonna have my horizon sit about at the one third mark. So I'm gonna take my brush and load up with some white on one side and some yellow on the other side. And this is the cadmium yellow deep hue. So right here where I want my sun is where I'm gonna start. And I think I'll start with the white side of the paint. And notice I'm just kind of making little dashes, just kind of building the shape where I want that glow to be. All of my dashes are kind of going different directions. And I'm just gonna kind of let it taper off over here. Don't worry about drawing your horizon at this point. We're gonna add mountains so it can cover up anything at the bottom that's rough. I'm gonna just get a little bit more white and really brighten this area up and bring it up a bit here. Now I'm gonna go into my orange and for the orange I'm using cadmium red light hue, but any orange you have will work. So I picked up some orange and I'm gonna keep a little bit of yellow in there. And the same type of thing. And don't be afraid to take it down over top of that yellow. If you've got too hard of a line, like I feel like that's a really hard line, I'm just gonna go until I've got the bulk of this color off of my brush. And then I can grab some more yellow white and just soften that line. I'm going right over top of that line to help drag the two colors together a bit more. just wipe a little bit of that off. I still have a hard line there, but I don't wanna drag that orange down into this part anymore. So I just grabbed some white and I'm gonna kinda of touch over that. Try and keep it as close on the yellow side as possible. Really light pressure there will help avoid laying down more paint, but just streak the colors together. So I like that a lot better. I can continue adding my orange over here. I'm just bringing it up a little bit higher than I did with the yellow. So be really free with this, guys. Don't let this part stress you out. It's, there's not a right and wrong way. It's impressionistic and you just wanna focus on not trying to blend these colors together. Let them be super separate colors like that. Just a little more orange up in this area. 
Now I'm gonna go straight into my alizarin crimson. Notice I still have a little yellow, white, and orange. I'm just gonna grab some of this alizarin crimson. And the same thing, I'm bringing it down into the orange and smearing those colors together. Do not, don't do like this and cut around the orange and let those colors have a hard line between them. Drag it down over it, that's okay. Get a little more of the orange if you feel like the transition is too abrupt, but make sure you do it before either of the colors is dry. Over here, it's gonna be a little bit darker, so I'm gonna add a little bit more red here than I did on the other side. And can you see how quickly I'm working? That's really not because I'm super practiced at this and I'm trying to make it look easy. It's because I'm trying to, not to allow myself a lot of time to micromanage what these colors are doing. I just wanna get them on there. I just grabbed a little orange here to blend that transition a bit. I just wanna get these colors on here and get it done. Now I'm gonna go into purple. I still have all of those colors. I have not cleaned off my brush. Right into the red. I'm gonna get a little more red and break up that transition spot. And now I am gonna clean off my brush. All right, clean brush, lots of purple, and I'm really just gonna fill this area in up here fairly dark with my purple. And I'm using Diox purple, which is a, quite a dark purple. But if you don't have Diox purple, you can use any purple that you want. And I feel like this area got a little muddy so once I'm done up here, I'll just bring a little bit of my purple back down into it and deepen it a bit, kick back some of that mud. Just pull that purple down in a little bit and it's bringing a little red up into the purple and that's okay. A little red over the break there. Stand back and look at it and decide if there's any areas you wanna to touch up. When I stood back, I felt like there's too much of a line here between the red and orange. So I'm gonna take a little bit of orange on one side. I did clean off my brush this time and red on the other side and just kinda of ease that transition here between those two colors. And I'm gonna add a little bit more red right here. Okay, so there's our sky. So I don't know if you can tell, but the way that we let the brush stroke show, the way the colors kind of blend together a little, and then the texture from the gel medium on the background kind of give the illusion of a stormyish sky. Maybe this is some clouds that are being brightly highlighted by the setting sun. And now what we're gonna do is paint in the water and we're gonna work opposite of how we did here. So instead of starting with the light and going dark, we're gonna start with the dark and go light. So I'm gonna load up with some purple on both sides of my brush. And I'm gonna just generally draw with the tip of the brush where my horizon is gonna be. It doesn't have to be perfect. So I left a break here because my sun is gonna be here and I want the reflection on the water to almost be moving down this way. So that's why I offset it from the sun here. Now I can take my brush flat and just kind of start streaking it in. Let it taper off. And on this side, it's gonna be darker than on this side. But see how I've angled it? So my dark is almost moving like that. And back out just a little bit here. And 
I'm just kind of trying to fill in those white spots. So see how it, it builds. It's closer here and then it widens and gets a little more narrow. I'm just going to darken up this side here. I think my paint was a little bit too wet when I was working on this side. And I'm applying this paint pretty thick so that when I start with the red next, it will smear into it a bit. So let's go right into our red. I've still got the purple, but I'm gonna grab quite a bit of red. And I'm gonna do the same type of thing right over top of that purple. Notice all my brush strokes are horizontal. These colors streaking together and the horizontal brush stroke is what's going to help the illusion that this is water. All right, now I've cleaned off my brush. I'm going to get some orange and the same type of thing. You can go ahead and take it all the way across the the break here. And I kind of feel like I brought my red in just a little farther than I wanted. So I picked up quite a bit of orange. It's pretty globbed on here. And because this brush doesn't scrape the paint so much like the one inch flat brush that I normally use does, it will lay down this paint in some pretty thick areas. So that just helps bring that back out a little bit. Let's add some of our yellow. So I've got some yellow and some white. I didn't mix them, I just grabbed them both. And the same thing. We are gonna add more once this is dry. This is just kind of our preliminary color. I'm going to get quite a bit of yellow right here in this wider spot. And I am allowing that to streak right over the purple a bit, but I'm not trying to blend these colors, so don't overwork it and get a big mud mess. Let's go ahead and leave it like that for now. We'll work on something else while that dries. So we're gonna draw our distant mountains. So I got a little bit of burnt umber and a little bit of Mars black, but I don't want these mountains to just be black brown and kind of stand out from everything else. I want them to feel like they're part of everything. So how I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna take some of this Diox purple and I'm gonna mix it about 50-50 with my burnt umber. It's, it gives you a really interesting color. See if I smear it. It's a really cool, almost a dark mauve color. And then I'm gonna grab a little bit of black. I don't wanna darken it so much that it's just black, but I want it to be fairly dark. So I'm gonna use the edge of the brush again and just start making some hills. Do keep in mind where you want your sun to be. I want my sun right here. So I'm gonna make sure that my hill comes down so it doesn't cover where I'm going to put my sun. So I'll kind of start here, kind of wiggle the brush as you go to give the hills a little shape, and then let it trail off on the horizon. And then just fill it in. If your paint is a little bit see-through like mine is, and you can see the color behind it glowing through, you can either let it dry and come back and put some more on it, or you can just leave it. I kind of like that I can see the hill glowing through because it feels to me like the light from the sky is reflecting on that hill. 
So I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm gonna bring this up just a little bit more right here though. And then I'm gonna give a little bit of a reflection. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just gonna look at this and kind of draw the same hill that I just did upside down. And I'm gonna add a little bit more brown just so it's more muted than the actual hill. Same thing on the other side, some purple brown, a hint of black, Just kind of twisting it as I go to give it an irregular shape and trail it off. I just got a little extra water on my brush so I can get a nice crisp line in here. And because my water is still wet, I'm gonna pick up a lot of those colors in there and that is okay.
wild looking grasses. And that's kind of what I like. It's not fully filled in at the bottom here, but once I've got the shape of my grasses, I can go back and fill that in a bit.
dust over that dark area and slightly into the lighter area. Such light pressure there, I almost can't even feel the brush touching the canvas. I can just barely see the streaks of color happening. And I'm gonna take whatever's going on in my brush right now and bring it up because I did pick up a little bit of those lighter colors and so it'll insinuate the highlight up here toward the top. I'm gonna bring that down just a little bit. I feel like that was too high. I don't want the brightness up that high. And let's do the same thing on the smaller trees, just not as much of the bright, bright highlights. Don't be afraid if your highlights are too bright right at first. That's okay. It's easy to take back. See how that brown purple mixture just kind of kicks that back a little bit. I don't want to cover all of it though. I'm going to grab just the tiniest hint of some of the stuff that I've wiped off. Bring it up here just a bit. Wiped it off, brown purple. That's what I was looking for. Now this tree here, I feel like is being blocked a lot by this tree. So it's not gonna have very much highlight at all on it. But I still want a little bit so it doesn't look like it's kind of plopped on top of the painting and not part of it. So I'm just going to grab a bit of this stuff I wiped off before. And I'm going to keep the lightest part of it up a little higher where it starts to bend away from this tree. And just kind of lightly streaking it in. little brown purple, a little bit more I had some white on my brush there. Now we're going to add just a few highlights to some of these small branches and we didn't really pay attention to where those branches were so we just kind of pasted our trees right over top of them. So what you can do first is get your brown purple mixture and I'm using this very small round brush. It's about an eighth of an inch wide at the bottom. It's just very, very small. So on my main tree here, I'm gonna take this branch that got lost behind this one and I'm just gonna bring it back over top of it because this is my main tree and I want it to seem in front of everything else. Same thing with any of the other branches from it that got lost. These two, I'm not gonna worry about their branches being tangled around each other. Now I've still got my brown black mixture on here and I don't wanna overdo the highlights on any of these branches. I just want to take some that maybe I lost a little bit and give them just a little bit more light. So I'm gonna take a little yellow, a little white, and just kind of mix that in with the brown black that's, or the brown purple that's on my brush. Just get kind of this muted brownish color. And I'm gonna swipe just a little highlight across the bottom edge. And then I can kick it back with some more brown purple. I just want to insinuate a highlight. I'm not actually making a highlight. Over here I can add just a little bit of a brighter highlight. But always 
kicking it back a bit. I'm not, don't draw a line on your branch and just leave a line there because it's gonna seem out of place. Even if it's just almost like a little stutter like that. Almost no pressure again on my brush. A little brown, purple. And notice I have my hand on the canvas, so I'm using this brush almost like a pencil. A little white, a little yellow. And I'm just gonna kind of stutter it along the edge. I'm putting so little pressure on here that my brush isn't staying fully contacted with the paint the whole time. It's kind of coming up off the canvas here and there. Most of the highlights that I put on the branches are gonna be on this side where it's closest to the sun. I don't really think I'm gonna do any on the other side. If I do, they definitely won't be quite as bright. I'm gonna add a little bit more in one more spot and then I'm done highlighting the branches. I'm gonna put some right here. Same thing with our little tree here. Little white, little yellow, mixed in with that brown purple mixture. And just kind of along the thicker edge of it. Don't put too much on it so that it gets lost in your water. And the super teeny parts of the branches you don't need to worry about. Some brown purple. And just kind of smooth it in a little. I'm gonna add just a couple little spots of some pretty bright on here. When I'm adding this brown purple, it's kind of smearing that lighter color, but it's also kind of just covering it a little bit. But the brown purple mixture is kind of transparent, so the other color shines through a little bit. So these little trees pretty much got lost. So I've still got some brown purple on here. I'm just gonna get some white and some yellow, and I'm just gonna really put the faintest of highlights on them. So my hand is on my canvas and I'm putting no pressure on my brush. I'm just gonna kind of let the paint skip down over the edge. And that's because I'm putting so little pressure on it that as my hand shakes just a little bit, occasionally the brush comes up off of the canvas and sometimes it puts a little more pressure on it. Then we'll get some more brown purple. And make sure those highlights aren't too intense. Just skip down over the opposite edge. And that is definitely gonna take some practice. It's all about brush control there and how much pressure you're putting on the brush. All right, one more thing and we're done. We're gonna add just a few little yellow flowers right in here. So I have my round brush cleaned off. I'm gonna get a glob of yellow over here, get a glob of white and kind of mix it in there, get a nice bright color. 
And I'm gonna pick up quite a bit of paint here. See how it's kind of balled on there. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of tap at it. Just in a few areas. I like the feel of the flowers kind of coming up, but I'll keep some down here in the darker part too. And I'm not really gonna put any on this side of the tree, but I might put a few just over here in front of this tree. Make them smaller as I come across over here. Now I'm just gonna get some white. I'm gonna add little highlights to some of these. Notice I'm not trying to keep my highlights right on the yellow dot. It's much smaller dots on this side. And now some solid yellow. And do it again. Just a couple small ones over there. And I realize that I always tell you guys to sign your paintings, but you never see me sign mine. So I'm gonna use some white yellow because I am not afraid of my signature. I'm not trying to hide it. And I'm gonna sign it in this dark corner. And there's your summer night at the lake painting. As I was finishing this painting up, I realized the irony in it that this seems like a great place to spend the 4th of July. And today is the 4th of July and I spent it painting this for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed painting this with me and I'm really excited to use this gel medium in many, many other ways. I've got some other plans coming up for it that I think you're gonna be pretty excited about especially those of you who have asked me questions about how to make acrylic paint stay open or wet longer. Make sure that you check out the video description below for a link to my Facebook page. I will have a link to our new Facebook Art Monster Squad group there soon. There's links to my website where you can buy Art Monster Squad t-shirts as well as some of my paintings. This one may be there very soon. If you haven't yet subscribed, please make sure that you do so so that you can paint with me every week. Come join a live Q&A session with me on Sundays and see a new vlog every Thursday. Thank you as always for watching everyone and I'll see you next time.